Okay, so this is the last part of chapter 23, 23.4, and it's about polymers. Now polymers, again, we're into another organic chemistry word that has a prefix and suffix. Poly means many, mer means units, so many units, polymer. Polymers are really, really large molecules, huge. Some of them are so big that you, I mean, a water bottle would be one giant molecule, so plastics. Any plastic, molded plastic object that you have is technically one giant molecule. Everything is covalently bonded throughout that entire thing. So they're macromolecules, they're huge. Some of them aren't quite that big, uh, like DNA, for example. We can't see DNA with the naked eye, but we can see it with a low powered microscope in some cases. And it is still enormous when you think about the total number of atoms that are in a DNA molecule. But polymers are made out of monomers and monomers are single units. So every polymer has its single units that are added together to create this giant molecule. Now I'm gonna go through two different types of polymers here and kind of how they form, the explanation of the reaction, and those are those go into your class notes. So if you wanted to pause it now and then uh, copy this down, you can. I'm just gonna go through it pretty briefly to shorten the video length here. So addition polymers, addition polymers are where you take two monomers and you add them together so they bond, and it's gonna change double bonds into single bonds. It's going to make the, the polymer more saturated. So here we have unsaturated monomers. These are both ethene, eth for two carbons, ene for the double bond. They're being added together. Now what they're doing is this carbon right here is going to form a bond with that carbon right there. But in order to do that, these double bonds have to go away. Otherwise, those carbons will have five bonds each, and that's not possible. We're going for four bonds for that carbon stability, okay? So when those two form a bond right here in the middle, these two double bonds go away. And then it happens over and over and over and over, and it makes a big, big, long molecule, okay? So these are ethenes. This is on its way to being polyethylene. Polyethylene is the example of plastic that you would find in your saran wrap. So addition, you're just taking two things, adding them together, and you're only getting one product, and, it, and it's big. You just keep doing this over and over and over. You keep adding monomers onto that chain. All right, condensation polymers are a little bit different. Hopefully when you see the word condensation, you think of water, okay? Condensation polymers form when two monomers are added together and a small molecule is lost. So I'm gonna give you an example in which that small molecule is water and that's why they're called condensation polymers. Um, but it could be another small molecule as well. It doesn't have to be water. So the example that we're gonna talk about is co combining amino acids, and amino acids are the building blocks of protein. And we need a, there's 20 essential amino acids that we need for our bodies, and, and those all differ in this piece right here, the R. Now remember, an amine or an amino group is an NH2, Okay, and an acid group, carboxylic acid, is this carbon with the double bonded oxygen and the OH. Okay, so that's our carboxylic acid group. So an amino acid is some kind of carbon molecule that has both an amine and a carboxylic acid in the molecule, amino acid. When we take these two and we add them to each other, and these could be the same amino acid or they could be different. There's lots and lots of different amino acids that we need. What's going to happen is the hydroxide here and the hydrogen here are going to get together. These two right here are going to form water. So they split out of that molecule and form water. So this is why condensation um, might, it might be helpful to remember that you're losing a small molecule like water, okay? Then the carbon here is going to form a bond with that nitrogen where we left the openings from the OH and the H leaving those molecules, okay? And so now we have that bond right here between the amino end of one amino acid and the carboxylic acid end of another. And there we have condensation polymers. All right, so that is the end of chapter 23. And if you go through the assessment questions and standardized test prep and you need any help with those or you wanna see the answers, just reach out to us and we will help you out. Thanks.